Whew. This is, you know, this is a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. What are you doing? Well, I'm itching my nose right now. No, I mean, what are you wearing? It's kind of hard to breathe in this. What are you wearing? It's not even Thanksgiving <laughs> yet. <laughs> well, okay, this is, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, Dressed up as Santa because it's fall, but this is Santa in oh, fall. I, I catch it. I'm this just like, what are you doing? This is a little bit of fall, doing? a little bit of winter because this is Finter. It's F Finter. Finter. F-I-N-T-E-R. You had to think about it. No, Frances told me about it. So Frances made up Finter? Yeah, she said this is a really confusing time of the year because it's like Finter. We call this Finter. It's, it's kind of like fall, but not really winter. Nobody calls it that. It, it takes a lot of wet uh, layers, so you got to dress in layers. Do you guys call you it know, that? Because you got, if you call it that, leave a comment below. I don't call it that. Yeah, I call is, it fall. This is weird. You know, you go into the store and you're trying to find stuff for Thanksgiving and just like, I don't know, this year in particular, it's Finter Extreme because San, like Santa is crashing Thanksgiving. Got, oh yeah, yeah, because he has to, because otherwise he's not going to get anything this yeah. year. So this is my rendition of Finter. It's a little bit of fall and a little bit of winter. You're a little bit of fall. I'm a little bit of winter. I'm all fall. See, it's awesome. I spent the day in a hoodie today. I got a really little good. bit of fall with the lumberjack look, sand in lumberjack, and a little bit of winter. I don't know which side of the screen she does what. Yeah, you got, you got some winter on you. Yeah, so it's a little warm, but you got to dress in layers this time of the year. So we'll see how long this lasts. Well, I think Finter's a definitely good idea. Hi, I'm Javier. And I'm Melanie. And this is Fishbowl, our weekly get together with you guys answering the questions that you've had this week about, well, mattress shopping, furniture shopping, sleep. We've gotten some sleep questions this week. Uh, all kinds of really cool questions this week, and this is where we answer them. And questions about holiday shopping, because it is all wacky wooky. We just skipped over Thanksgiving altogether. Yep. yep. We're ready. Santa is out and about. Santa is getting a jump on things. We've had a lot of Santas in here already. We, we have. Yeah. Secret yeah. shoppers. Today we already we, had requests yep. for secret shoppers. Yep. Today we had a very, Santa very in busy. here buying one of the Cohassets. Ooh, yeah. that was so awesome. Some, somebody's getting one. We have even, um, <laughs> we've even been doing gift wrapping already. Oh, yeah. And we have a bunch of gift certificates that I've already filled out. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, cool. so people are busy. ready. We got mm -hmm. stocking stuffers. Santa is out getting hungry, though. Yeah. I'm what? getting hungry. Hey, wait a minute. What? Where did you find those? Oh, we got a new shipment of Hammond's candies. Yeah. Handmade Hammond's candies. Yeah. Those in particular, where did you find those? I found them in a drawer. In a drawer? Yep. In my desk? Pretty much. You found them in my drawer in my desk? Uh-huh. <laughs> It's nice to know that my desk is sacred. <laughs> They're so good. Mm. You I haven't even one? had one yet. Yeah, you did. They were no. already open. You were hiding them from us. Yeah, I was hiding you know them who from told you guys. Me they were there. Ale? Oh. My you God. know how I found them? How did you find them? Francis. <laughs> Francis was going through my desk drawers too. Yeah, she was looking for labels. <laughs> 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 The labels are by the printer. Why is everybody going through my desk drawers? Aren't these amazing? You're not even answering the question. <laughs> <laughs> they literally dug these out of my desk drawers. Why is Santa's mouth so tiny? <laughs> Santa's mouth has beard hair all over it. You might not want to do that. <laughs> all right. So the whole point of Fishbowl is answering your questions mm. and not be drowned out by Miss Claus over here. Oh dear. Oh These dear. These are oh dear. so good. I yeah. got. Oh. Hold so, on. I yeah. gotta. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. You gotta. Yeah. You gotta. Yeah. Oof. Let's, you let's know get these are um, vanilla bean marshmallows. Mm-hmm. They're very says, good. Mm, handmade indulgent snacks. They're fat-free, cholesterol-free, and low in sodium. They'd be great with a cup of hot cocoa. Oh, I was thinking that same thing when mm -hmm. I pulled them out of your desk mm -hmm. drawer. I was like, I gotta go find that hot chocolatey yeah. in the back. Luckily, I hid the hot chocolate from them. I so found they can't... it. It's right there. 
<laughs> there was a whole bunch of it in the back. I didn't make it in tonight's show. I was I was a little bit. How did you find it? It's a little hot still. It's like 80 degrees outside right I now. I literally put that box underneath a whole bunch of plastic. Yeah, I, I, I found it. You know how I found it? How'd you find it? Francis. She was doing inventory. Francis. <laughs> she was doing Hammond's inventory. And she's like, look at what I found. I counted it. So um, <laughs> these marshmallows, vanilla, handmade. They got a little bit of powdered sugar on They're them. They're going to be perfect for your hot cocoa this season. I Come don't on even by. think I would put it in my hot cocoa. I think I would sip and bite. You could do them that way too. Mm -hmm. could but, do them that oh way. gosh, yeah. these are. All right, shall we Ooh. ask our first question? Since you guys have dug all the way through my drawers, my desk drawers, and you guys have found my private, well not private, but my hidden stash of hot cocoa. Oh, hold on, oh, I'm just, I'm working up a thirst. That's creamer. Mm -hmm. Why are you drinking creamer? It's the only thing I had. I was out of my Perrier, Perrier, with my San Pellegrinos. So you're drinking creamer? I have this silk almond creamer. It's peppermint season, you know. It's fall. I'm just like, move over pumpkin spice. It's fall. Move over pumpkin spice with all your pumpkin spice. Mm -mm. Peppermint is taking fall. over. No, it's, it's everybody fall. just get on the peppermint bandwagon. It's still fall. Yeah, this is almond creamer, but you know what it tastes like? It tastes like winter, mm. except that it's fall. That's disgusting. This is dark chocolate peppermint, Ooh. almond creamer. It's like pretty much just a hot chocolate. Like you can drink this straight. Evidently. It's that good. Evidently. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we ask our first question now, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. No, 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 no. I can pour some in right no, there. No, no, I'm, I'm good mm. with my water. It's good straight. Yeah, I'm good with my water. Can't read these upside down, can I? How do you determine what beds work for what people? I understand that you guys work with people's posture in bed, but how do you know where to start? There's so many beds. I think this person was wondering because they had been bed shopping. If I remember, this was on Wednesday of last week and she was bed shopping uh, herself at another store and hadn't been helped and didn't know where to start. And then when she came in here, she was just wondering how we knew where to start. So how, how do you know where to start, your, your particular customers? Well, I first up, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you might want to lose the Santa beard. <laughs> the first thing we do uh, is first I ask you how you sleep. Right. And I ask what keeps you up at night. Other than stress, other than stress. Mm -hmm. Although we do have people share that with us too. <laughs> hey, and we're talking aches and pains. Yeah. And whether you sleep on your side or your yep. back, that's a good place to start. Yep, yep. Um, it's kind of like going to the optometrist. I always use that as an example. Yep. Because mm -hmm. everybody's body is different and you should be fitted to the mattress for your body type and your sleep style and your sleep profile as a whole. Yep. Not for specifically just a price point or a commission in my belief. I think that you should that go should be off anybody's of, belief isn't aren't you here to help the customer we're here to help the customer right. and we are here to i mean we spend so much of our lives in bed asleep in bed right? it's a it's a wellness issue mm -hmm. this is a health mm -hmm. and wellness issue so we approach it from a health and wellness standpoint mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome and so we have lots to choose from uh just like if you go and get your eyes tested there's lots to choose from there too and we mm -hmm. like to to find those possibilities for you so we do a selective uh, kind of questioning. We don't try to pry too much, but the more information that you can share with us about your sleep yep. style, your lifestyle, then we can um, really find the right mattress for you. And that lifestyle includes, do you sleep with your pets? Do you sleep with a partner? Do you sleep with kids? You know, how much, how, when do you sleep? Do you, all kinds of stuff. Lately it's been, do you sleep with grandbabies? Cause we've had a lot of proud grandparents in here that oh, have been with absolutely. their grandbabies. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about just asking the right questions to get to know our customers, get to know what their sleep styles are, and then we know which beds to start with. Mm -hmm. Another thing that, that, that we are not afraid to ask right up the front, so that way there's no shock, is the important question of, 
Oh, which budget? Do you have a budget in exactly. mind? Exactly. Do you have a goal in mind? What is yeah. your goal and what is your budget? Right, right. Because we don't want to sell you something. I mean, I could sell you the moon. Exactly. I could, I could sell you. We I have mean, a $9,000 bed in here. We yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, it might as well be a Tesla. It is so cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a big drop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, here we go with the Elon Musk again. No, but, but yeah. No, I mean, if you're going to go and buy a mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. you might as well drive the coolest thing on the lot. Right? So... At least that's my approach. Let's go for a test drive. Um, and then you kind of can tailor it back to suit your needs right. and your budget. And how, what if you don't know your budget? I mean, right. mattress prices have increased and decreased in certain areas. Yeah. I mean, there has been some decreases in some little areas, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you know, over the last, let's say, 30 years of mattresses, right? Because products have in yeah. in increased, like yeah. materials The technology's gotten 10,000 times better, so yeah. So if the yeah. last time you purchased a mattress was 20 years ago, mm -hmm. or you inherited a, a mattress, there's a lot to learn. There's a so, sticker shock that happens to a lot of people when they haven't bought a mattress in forever. But we try to we try to talk you through it so that way you know exactly what the differences are. Mm -hmm. And it's important, and the, we ask every customer, it's part of our training, what kind of budget do you have in mind? Because what happens is we find the, we, we, I mean, we can find you a bed that's going to fit your back perfectly, but if it's not going to fit your budget, there's not, uh, that's not an option that we want to bring to the table because then it's going to upset you mm -hmm. and we don't want that. Yeah, um, absolutely. But we do have something that's going to fit your back, your posture and help you sleep better. Awesome. Okay? All right. All right. I had, to, I had to lose the Santa hat. It was, every time I looked down, it was like, Beard. I can't see. I had to shave real fast. Hey, it's time for Mel's crazy. There's a hypothesis. A hypothesis there. Wait. <laughs> Hypothetical. There's an apostrophe there. I paused. A hypothesis is a way different thing it's than a totally, totally. than apostrophe, but I kind of combined apostrophe and hypothetical in the same word, it and it becomes even, hypothesis. It doesn't even. There's yeah. a hy. There's a. No. Mel's crazy. <laughs> that is itchy. Wow. That's... Yeah. Look at you. You got little, little, little rug burn there. All right. So tell me a little bit about our hypothetical Oh, today. man. Is All right. Is it a good one? So this is showing the weekend before Thanksgiving. Yes, it is. We're getting y'all warmed up because I know some of y'all are thinking about it real fast. We're going to give you some options that you can take with you in your travels. We've got exotic imported goods. To take with you so that's why we're we're getting a jump on this. oh is that what we're doing yeah we're we're, oh. we're jumping ahead uh i don't so, know i was on the road all day today so here's our hypothetical what is it okay let's say that you can take any standard fair item from the menu you know we all know what the typical thanksgiving is okay. right you can take any of that menu and okay. substitute it for anything else what would you do well so like you know the cranberries and the the, the corn and the mashed potatoes and the turkey. There, is, state there standard, isn't a right? single thing on the Thanksgiving table that I don't love. Okay? I'll start, mm. I'm going to start it with that statement. Okay? Even the cranberry sauce. I love it. I, okay? Are you, okay, what kind of cranberry sauce are you? Are you a cranberry sauce like real fresh cranberries or are you the one that's like the stickler? It's got to be in the shape of the can. I love the can. Just because it reminds me of when I was a kid. Okay, now. But I your, love the sauce. In your family, are you allowed to cut the jellied can into That's rings a sin. before? Okay. That's a sin. All right. Finally, something that Javier and I can agree upon. That, that's that's good. a that sin. No, the only it has thing. to be the can. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot Did touch it. Did you just it. say that's the only thing we agree upon? Pretty much. So, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so. <laughs> Poor John, because like he never had experienced jellied cranberry sauce. Oh dear. And like he, I was trying to explain this to him and he went through so many things last year and he was trying to find the right one. He bought multiple cans. And then when he went to, I was like, yeah, just, you know, take the cranberry out, put it on the table. Well, he wasn't, he like, I think he might've sliced it. <gasps> and I was like, no. No, no. If and it's so not in the shape of an Alpo can, if it's not <laughs> we, in the shape of an Alpo can on the table, I don't want it. Thank goodness he had bought multiple cans. Okay. So we had we like took that aside, and I was I I like was like okay, so this is how we do this. This is how we do it. Like that, mm -mm -mm -mm. and then the can comes off. Yeah, and then you. Yep. 
And then you leave it like that. You have to. Yeah, and he was like, this is weird. Actually, last year was for John's first Thanksgiving. Aw. Like in so the entirety sweet. of his life. I mean, that's, maybe when he was with his family growing up as a kid. But That's so cool. Yeah, he it was all new to him. Congrats, John. He's been on like deployment for 20 years without Thanksgiving, maybe. Oh, poor John. Yeah. yeah so yeah. anyways, hypothetical. Oh, um, okay. What so, would you substitute? So you like it all. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go past hypothetical and tell you what we're doing this year. I'm actually gonna get New York steaks. <laughs> <laughs> we are not doing turkey. We're doing New York strips and we're doing baked potatoes and macaroni. Are you buying them from my mom? Because she's watching this right now and she knows that you are getting New York strips and she has some in her freezer. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to. <laughs> Why didn't you remind me this last trip? I don't know. I didn't know you were going to bring it up at the show. <laughs> Oops. Hi. <laughs> so anyways, so I'm doing New York okay, strips. No. Yeah, strip. So we're doing New York strips. We're doing uh, baked Move potatoes over turkey. and macaroni. Okay. We're not doing a traditional one this year. Um, and honestly, I don't know why we're not doing traditional. It's just something that got Well, there's a me. turkey shortage. Yeah. Is there? Oh, maybe I don't know I don't even know either way I want to do I want to do something different this year and that's what we're doing oh okay cool yeah, yeah so I I'm pretty like much I love everything but I think I'd add to it like because if you take, you said away, take away you didn't say like, add like if okay then I would take all right I do know what I would do you want my honest opinion what because this is what I wrote down earlier okay all right on your thousand cue cards. Yeah. The canned corn has to go. <gasps> yeah, that has to go. And that has to be um, substituted with some uh, fried okra. Oh, okay. I see I where think you're that's going. an equal yeah. exchange. Yeah. We that's... definitely need some more like fried foods. So like I'd fried food it up. I'd put like instead of the mashed potatoes, we do like fried mashed potatoes. I mean, if you're going to go all out, you might as well go Just all out. Just fry it all. Yeah, you got to have it all fried up. You oh, know, man. Um, that's pumpkin a, pie, we're just going to yeah. stick with the pecan pie. We're going to go a whole southern route with, the with what this. what pie? Pecan. Pecan? Pecan. 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 A pecan pie. No, we're having a pecan pie. It's a pecan pie. <laughs> and, um, hold up. I had a whole... Oh, you've got like a thousand cue cards. <laughs> this was really, really She's going to lose them. She's going to lose them. Okay. Um... See, oh, it, it was going to be total Cracker Barrel style. Oh. So like Cracker Barrel. Just fry it all. Pretty much. Um, yeah. But you know what? Instead of that turkey, mm -hmm. I mean, turkey, really, I think there's so many other great meats like elk, deer. Um, I wanted elk. I would do a dang goose, like a, a big old Canada or snow goose in the crock pot. Oh, that is the best. Have you ever had a fresh Have pot, you're... like Canada goose in the crock pot? Oh. How the hell do you fit a goose in a crock pot? You gotta have a big ass. <laughs> you gotta have a really big crock pot. I don't even I understand myself. that. Yeah. So, um, big crock pot, it's all dark meat, it's so tasty. I like goose. Yeah, there's nothing more mm -hmm. fulfilling than going out and uh, getting your own, bagging your own goose. Um, and From then, the backyard. Well, no, no. I grew up with them. Well, I guess you could. When we were up in Springer, you could definitely, in the backyard, yeah. they used to fly over the house. We did do that a couple times. Yeah. Um, so then you got to have some other, like, game meats. I would do all game meat, throw in some trout. I mean, if you're going to have a feast, I mean, there's what? more. And then How you did gotta... this turn into Annie Oakley and... In style? <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got to have the creme brulee. I don't know why there's a Thanksgiving without creme brulee, except for that it's French. But oh, you all might of a sudden as well we went from knock uh, it up, have trailer a good park taste. to, uh, to a French restaurant. Wow, I, I, like I would that. pretty much think so. And then you got to have the blue Stilton cheese. I mean, I'm talking I exotic imports on Thanksgiving. I mean, wasn't that what Thanksgiving was all about? No, like, here's all, no. all of our exotic foods. Yeah, no, it was really about, like, hey, we're you guys are starving. <laughs> we're going to bring you some food. Oh, <laughs> Why are you here? Boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So well. anyways, <laughs> bringing the hypothetical to a close. So really, you're, you're, you would really go with uh, okra game over meat. corn and game meat. Okra and game meat. I think yeah. that's that's. There's nothing I mean, like squirrel. There's nothing like squirrel for Thanksgiving. 
I didn't say squirrel. You said game. A good, a good pair of back straps. You can't beat that, though. Uh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why my <laughs> New York strips are just going to be... I'm and gonna... I really should have told her about the New York strips, so... Sorry. <laughs> I got some in my freezer. <laughs> I got oh. a quarter of a beef in there. All right, okay. That brings us to our first break, and we will be right back. and then I realized I had forgotten all my sound effects. You know, last week, you forgot your sound effects. <laughs> I'm gonna make up for it this time. It was... It was a much better episode without the sound effects. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> yeah. It was anyway. a little cold, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we got the air conditioner in here on. Yeah, because it's, it's literally like, it was 85 degrees today again. Yes, it was pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. Oh dear. All right, well, it's time for question number two. So que customer question number two. Remember, these are your questions. If you have any questions that you'd like to submit, please submit them to info, I-N-F-O, at livewellfurnishings.com or leave them in the comments below. We love getting questions. Obviously, we love answering questions and we love sharing that information with you. So. I'm so thirsty. Do you know what a turkey drinks out of? What does a turkey drink out of? A goblet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can an adjustable base be set for my husband snoring and still have me in the zero gravity position? Ooh, that is an interesting question. I know where it came from. Want me to give you the background on it? Yeah. Okay. I'm so, kind of having a hard time visualizing yeah. this. So here's the background <laughs> on it. It was a husband and wife that came in here and um, they wanted a king, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but she had, she had very different needs than he did, okay? Okay. She needed the zero G position to alleviate some lower back strain. Mm -hmm. And he needed the adjustable base that um, would help him get over snoring issues that he was having. Mm -hmm. So what I, what we ended up telling them was that a one-piece king would not work for them. Oh, okay? okay. Because it had to be a two-piece king because her needs were so different. I mean, we literally tried to put them in the same position mm -hmm. and it didn't work. So um, <clears throat> what happens is if you have a one-piece king, and I'm going to try and show you with my hands here. A one-piece king is basically a one-piece, okay? So both heads lift up at the same time. So therefore, it doesn't help the it doesn't help one individual <laughs> to, to because the needs were so different. You need two different heads that work separately, okay? So when you get a split king, which is two different adjustable bases and two different mattresses, we're not playing patty cake. <laughs> uh, you can have the individual needs met by two different mattresses and two different uh, adjustable bases, and what you do is you pair them together. That's called a split king. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And so that's how we met their needs. Was yeah, independent, yeah, head in, and independent feet. Yep, independent. Um, <laughs> and then you know a little bit about how the snore detection works on oh, some of these guys. Awesome. How does that work? So that is a free app that you download on any of your devices with your Apple or Android. Uh, it's pretty much takes the remote and mm -hmm. places it on your phone. So you can go ahead and uh, manipulate the base using your phone. Mm -hmm. Then there's a part of that app that you can download and it uh, has a decibel reader. So oh. it's constantly listening mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. sleep patterns. Um, and when you start to snore and it picks it up on your side of the bed, which mm -hmm. would be your adjustable base, um, it will then adjust it just slightly and bring up the head just a little bit Very uh, cool. to compensate for that you you snoring. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a neat little feature. Mm -hmm. It's a really neat little feature to have, and it does help you. Uh, it doesn't eliminate snoring, but it reduces snoring, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That was a great question. Yeah. All right. It's time for your pick of the week. Whew. Hey, before we get to that, I do you know why the turkey crossed the road? I was gonna say I think I know where we're headed. Um, why did the turkey cross the road? It wanted to prove it wasn't chicken. I think that was awesome. We need some sound effects because no. I know they're laughing out there. We don't need sound effects. I think that they know that was awesome. I can see them and they're not laughing. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing. Yeah, you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so what's our pick of the week this week? Uh, my pick of the week is some really awesome gift grabs. So I received a phone call and I was given a mission by a secret Santa shopper. A mission. Yeah, and they had a budget in mind and I said, okay, describe your person to me in using three sentences. Well, that person would be a hearty drinker. <laughs> yeah, they and they would... What was the, what was? No, I'm just thinking of a Oh, person. that was the first sentence. They were like, they drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same friend. <laughs> they hike a lot. They're very outdoorsy. Okay. Was right. the <laughs> that would be another one. Yeah, yeah. We have the same friend. <laughs> and the third one. Uh, oh, great sense of humor. Oh, I like it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit sarcastic. We and have like, everything to fit I got that. it all. Yep. Uh, yep. So I took the budget in mind mm -hmm. and I created four or five different little gift grab ideas. How cool. I uh, was able to then take uh, make sure that they all fit within that budget. Mm -hmm. I was able to give a quote for each. It was almost like the price is right. That's so cool. It was very, very fun to do. Uh, and then each one of those, she was able to, I sent her pictures and we even FaceTimed um, and interfaced that way because she actually liked a little couple of items from grouping one uh, and wanted to switch it with grouping three. So we did a little bit of an exchange and we're still within that budget because all of those items were about the right uh, thing. And then we had gift wrap and we wrapped it up and it actually went uh, up towards Albuquerque. So wow. that was, that was a really cool thing. So just, just, and let me interrupt you for one sec, just so you guys know, mm -hmm. this is available for all you customers. Mm -hmm. This is, th these are services we provide. You can call, you can text, you can email, you can reach out to us. However, we're, we're here for you. It, this is a new kind of shopping and this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can ship anywhere. We ship mm -hmm. over to the East mm -hmm. Coast, the West Coast. Um, Connecticut. We, Connecticut, Louisiana. Yeah. That was the latest. Down there. Yeah. Arizona. Everywhere. I think we need to get a map and put little pins. We do. I really we would do. like to do that. Yeah. Um, so we can ship anywhere and we just need a budget and some ideas and our little Santa's elves can work together and we can even gift package it for you. Uh, take out all the thinking. I know that a lot of times... Um, partners or husbands or fiancés will come in here, boyfriends, and they, they don't know what to get oh, their that, significant other. She's referring and to two men that came in here last year and they were a blast. They were <laughs> So you don't even know, like, what, what, are, what do I get for my partner? What, yep. who, what do I get for whomever? And so if they're hard and picky to shop by, then just give us an idea and we can put that together. We can take out all of the thinking. Yep. Uh, we also have gift certificates available. Uh, so that's really awesome. Too. And a lot so, of turkey puns. Mm -hmm. Lots of turkey puns. Uh, do you know what you call a sarcastic turkey? 
I didn't mean insert turkey pun here. Yeah. <laughs> no, what do you call a sarcastic turkey? A smirky. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a yeah. good one. I like your pick of the week. I really do think that's some oh, really so great ideas. It is. So all of the stuff behind us, we're going to go ahead and show you an up close of what all of it is. All of these items are great for stocking stuffers. They can easily be paired with a couple of other items in the store. I, I do say that maybe the minimum items that you want to pair together is three because three just works really nicely together compositionally. But you can choose a variety of any of those items. Uh, you Some of the items can be to group up for your feet. We have uh, little foot care, a uh, little spa type can stuff. Can we insert a video of me treating my feet? Oh goodness, I don't think Gretchen would allow that. <laughs> sure, if you want to work on it. <laughs> um, so we've got a lot of spa ideas. Now this isn't just for her, okay? We've got a bunch of stuff for men. We've got men fragrances. I even found some wonderful beard oils over here that are just fabulous from Los Poblanos. Definitely, definitely want to keep that on your list for anyone that has a beard. I'm uh, sporting wonderful. a winter beard right now. Yes. So, <laughs> so uh, come on by. We've got lots of, lots of, so those are all of my, uh, gifts to choose from this year um, right here in the back. Fantastic. And we have a lot to choose from. A lot. So yeah, uh, just think of it as a new way of shopping. Contact us. If you don't have a chance to come to the store, we're here for you regardless. Um, we really do have every system available that we can help you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. With that, we're going to take our second break. We will see you in a little bit. See ya. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gretchen, and I'd like to invite you to watch our new show on the Live Well channel called Unique in the Boutique. We highlight all the cool new items that we bring in each week, and we would love to invite you personally to join us every Monday for Unique in the Boutique right here on the Live Well YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. Mm. What is that? It's snow. It's, it's, it's snowing. Snow? Mm -hmm. Why is it snowing? Because winter's coming. Winter's coming? <laughs> yeah. I told you I was working on some special I effects. I thought I told you I wasn't springing for special effects. <laughs> I know. That's why we're working on our own special effects. I distinctly remember telling you, hey, we don't have a budget for special effects. <laughs> well, we have a small budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have any budget. <laughs> winter, winter is coming. Alrighty. Yep. Alrighty. Okay, with that, it's mm. time for the customer said. What did the customer say this week? Oh, the customer this week said, um, boy, there's are some really nice soft socks. <laughs> Let I, me guess. I don't know. I was so, <laughs> in, I was so <laughs> in my office. I wasn't on the floor because I've been really busy working on advertising and Whoa. this show and all of the special effects. I can see how that took so much time. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what the customer said because I was actually on the sales floor oh, this week. Yeah, you yeah. Go, it's, no, it's they're, about they're, time you work. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So this week the customer said that they were really, really, really surprised at the technology behind our rest bed. Okay. And they were really shocked at how it would conform to them even while they were asleep. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, this same customer, this right. is a trip, okay? Right. So we go from the rest bed, then we walk the floor and they come to the ultra comforts. Uh -huh. And what's at the ultra comforts? Nothing but robotics. She's oh, like, no. she's like, what is this? And, and I, I mean, we tried to explain to her, it was a lift chair that does all, that does all this and everything. And she was just blown away by technology, technology making its way all in your bedroom and in your living room. Awesome. So she was just blown away. So yeah, uh, so the customer this week said that there is a whole lot of technology that's invading our houses, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool. For the benefit of the, the, the greater good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it's really cool to see people just blown away by how much furniture has, has kind of come forward. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. I had a couple customers on the rest bed as well and they, they thought they were so impressed with it. Mm -hmm. Um, especially because it's a, it's a bed that adjusts to you over a long period of time mm -hmm. and it doesn't just have to be that. And it's not that medical feel. Right. 
It, it right. is not a medical feel at all. It feels more like a spaceship. <laughs> I like it. It does. It does. It's very futuristic. It's very comfortable. It's very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's actually very user-friendly. Like, at first, it can be a little bit intimidating. It's overwhelming at first. Um, it really is. There's so but, many options. But really, once you get it, and you can go full automatic. Like, you can mm -hmm. go completely automatic. Have it pamper you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the customer said this week. And it is time for Stump the Chump. Stump the Chump. Do, 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 do. Really? That was your sound effect? Do, 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 do. Well, Oliver has my phone. I haven't taught him how to work the sound effects, but oh. that's coming up next All week. All right. Yeah, okay. he's going to be my sound effects man. Oh, dear. <laughs> we don't have a budget. All right, so here's the deal. Stump the Chump. We mm. ask ourselves three sleep-related questions. Oof, and we decide, well, yeah, it's like <sighs> 90 degrees in here and you're wearing like 10 layers. Well, I'm wearing two seasons. That's, yeah. that's kind of fall. <sighs> All right. So what do you got this week? Because Stump the Chump is one of my favorites because I always win. All well, right. Stump 50 the Chump. 50% of the time I win. Stump the Chump. Yeah. All oh, right. look, you, look they, they're even highlighted. Stump yeah. the Chump won. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. All okay, right. I'm still in the Thanksgiving mood here. Okay. So tryptophan. Oh, yeah, it has something to do with tryptophan, but that's not the answer because I knew you were gonna be like tryptophan. Turkey. And I am gonna. That's the next word. Napping. Th amino acid. Okay. L. <laughs> L. Tryptophan is an amino acid <laughs> in turkey. <laughs> no. He's always looking at my cards. I am not. I'm, I literally know this. Okay. And I'm so itchy, like I've been itchy all week. If you haven't noticed, there's some little guys here. I can't wait for that section. Oh yeah, that's coming up. We got a bed bug section coming up. But anyways, <laughs> L-tryptophan in Turkey is often associated with- Napping. A sleepy state. Yes. After eating turkey. What key hormone does L-tryptophan help in the production of no way did you just stump me <laughs> like mind blown melatonin nope it's not melatonin what is it <laughs> it's called serotonin boo <laughs> boo okay yeah. that was a good question that was a good one so yeah. this is where you you normally ingest something horrible yeah i think i'm gonna bring eggnog for the next show I could just sit here and drink eggnog. Ugh. I think we need like it could be eggnog, alcoholic egg, eggnog. Eggnog would be a good thing to yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah. We could do straight shot eggnog <laughs> for stuff to chop. Yes, that's on next week's menu. Okay. That's because like Look Thanksgiving just kicks off all of the nonsense. <clears throat> all right, so. here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Exercise improves <laughs> what part of sleep the most, or which part of the sleep cycle the most? Deep REM. REM. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Deep sleep. I just said deep. No, you said REM. Deep REM. That's not the same. Deep REM. Exercise improves sleep quality. There's a difference between deep sleep and REM sleep? Yeah. The amount of time you spend in slow wave sleep, specifically known as deep sleep. Mm. Okay. I always thought they were the same yeah. thing. That's Your weird. Your turn. Stump the chump too. Yes, she goes through a whole lot of index cards. Yeah. It's all right, they're made with recycled paper. How does serotonin affect our sleep cycles and what other parts of our body does it affect? Why I'm not gonna so know important? this anymore. <laughs> I haven't, I, I remember I did an episode on this, but I don't remember it. This was years ago. Okay, that I don't know. That sounds like an excuse to it me. It is, it's a total excuse. What is it? Okay, serotonin is a key hormone in our bodies that stabilizes our mood feelings of well-being and our happiness. Okay. This hormone impacts our entire bodily functions. Our entire body is affected by serotonin. Okay. It enables our brain cells and other nerve system cells to communicate with each other. Okay. And serotonin also helps with sleep cycles to and also improves our digestion. So it improves our sleep cycles. That is awesome. And mm -hmm. you can't take it in a pill. No, but you can eat a lot of turkey. 
there's an excuse for turkey sandwiches. I mean, they sandwiches. have serotonin receptor types of medications that improve your serotonin uptake, but you can improve serotonin through uh, your diet. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are not, it's not just found in turkey. There are other food ingredients. Yep. Yeah. We'll talk okay. about that later. What chemicals does exercise release that help reduce stress, which in turn helps you sleep better? Oxytocin? Wrong. What is oxytocin? <laughs> that sounds like hillbilly, <laughs> hillbilly heroin to begin with. I think okay. I gave my dog oxytocin one time when uh, she had puppies. <laughs> exercise. Then our bodies produce ex oxytocin after we have babies, doesn't it? I have it no makes clue. It, it's, the, it's the love hormone, right? That it, like it communicates between the mama and the baby. I have no clue. If no you know, leave it in the comments there. below. <laughs> we don't know. All right. So, exercise releases oh, en dopamine. endorphins. Okay? <laughs> These are chemicals that give you a post-exercise high, boosting your mood and reducing stress, which in turn helps you sleep better. Yeah, but you have to exercise. Ooh, the next question. The next question. <laughs> I'll address that. All right. I'm trying to save calories, not burn calories. All right, go for That's it. That's why I'm drinking creamer here. <laughs> and doing a good job of it. <laughs> you know, I saw this meme today and it was, it was like. Is this a turkey pun? No, it was like, it was really funny. It, it, was, it was like, oh gosh, it was a conversation between God and an angel. And God was like, hey angel, what are they doing down there? And he's like, it's not looking good. They're making milk from almonds. <laughs> and he goes, what? They're making milk from almonds. I gave them like eight animals to make milk from. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, my almond milk. No, There's no punchline there. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things you had to see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Okay, list three things that Santa practices to ensure a good night's rest on Christmas Eve. Okay. What are three things that you can do on Christmas Eve, Santas out there, to, you know, because we, Christmas Eve, you gotta get up early. Okay? Heavy drinking. You do heavy it? Heavy drinking. It helps or it doesn't and heavy help? Heavy drinking. <laughs> I don't know. Christmas in my house is a little different. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. So, what do what three things does Santa do to sleep better on Christmas Eve? Okay. First off, he has a very busy day, so he gets some exercise. Okay. Then he drinks warm milk. Warm milk releases chemicals that or hormones that help you sleep better. And then he avoids the chocolate chip cookies because chocolate chips have caffeine. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. You kind of created your own little thing there. That works. I have a whole scenario. Okay, so the first three things that a good Santa does uh, to have a restful Christmas Eve night. I mean, really, Santa doesn't sleep on Christmas Eve, first of all, ever. Yeah, that's true. He works, at, he pulls a So one day of the week it works, yeah. Yeah, works, but yeah. so that your your little ones can have a restful night's sleep is uh, definitely, you know, Santa is sober. He's a sober Santa. He's not, you know, out there drinking and reindeering. That doesn't happen. <laughs> no. And then we've got uh, lots of Santa's little helpers involved, these little elves, and they put together all of the toys. All right, we're talking like doll houses and bicycles and all of these things that have a million parts. He doesn't wait to the last minute. Obviously. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you don't wait That's... to the last minute. You do that weeks in Ask advance. Ask my daughter about that one. And then you hide those. Yeah, really no. well. Ask my daughter about that one. Else. Yeah, There's no. nothing like having your daughter come out screaming because she's getting a bike that's in a box that's not made yet. And a million pieces and there's pieces missing. Oh yeah, she's stuck she... on a container ship somewhere. Yep. Okay, and then um, this Poor is Santa. a good one. This is one to take away some of the the last minute stress of making a meal. Is you make a check, make a list, and check it twice. Now making a list, can we can take that to a whole new level in grocery shopping and you can actually start preparing mm -hmm. the food mm -hmm. items that you're going to need, Yep. right? And then you can um, visually see those 
without being the stress in the store and people going for the jelly cranberry. It's mine, you know, <sighs> last turkey. <sighs> um, let you, you know, all that. The you just, of you know. just list. I don't know. It gets crazy. You know, shelves are going to be empty. People are going to be scrambling for turkeys. It is going to get mean. Frozen unfortunately. turkeys. I mean, that's going to get nasty. So just go ahead and, from the comfort of your home, make a food list and check it twice and have it shipped and delivered to your home, or do use a pickup service. Oh, like the box food that you get. <laughs> <laughs> that even got worse. Okay. Oh. oh, I forgot where that box was. I still haven't found it. I got home with the box. There's literally food in that box. I know, but see, I'm moving. <laughs> and there are so many. Okay, just so this isn't so an boxes. inside joke. There this, are so many boxes. Just so this isn't an inside joke. <laughs> She's going to post the video here. Okay, I had a friend suggest that we get on this food service. I really honestly thought that this this food service was like pre-cooked meals. You could I could just have them delivered to the store and then I could pop them in the microwave because I'm here all the time. I literally live here. And then I could just like cook my food in the back and be like, ooh, totally done. Awesome. Okay. The food box arrives. I am so excited. The outside of the box says, it's about ready to smell good in here. It's gonna smell really good in here. That's what the outside of the box says. And I'm like, yeah. And so I'm starving. It arrives right at lunchtime. And I'm so excited, I pop that box open and it is just a bunch of ingredients. It was- You have to cook that stuff. <laughs> if you guys could have seen her face. <laughs> No. The biggest. I ain't got time for this. It was the. It was. It was like this face of no. like she was salivating for opening the box, and then this her, the face looks up, and it was <laughs> it was like this disappointed look, and it's naturally the recipes as, as and things I have to cook yeah, and so many carrots. <laughs> as empathetic as I am, and, <laughs> I literally busted up laughing. I couldn't. I couldn't take it anymore. I thought it was there hilarious. There were so many carrots, and then I got one. Slice piece of, of bread. bread, one tiny slice of white bread. In I a mean, plastic bag. I mean, white bread, man. One individually piece of white bread. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, nobody, yeah, this really nobody happened. Nobody eats one piece of white bread. This really happened. This really happened. <laughs> she got a box of raw food in the store and just <laughs> died crying over it. And then I was like, I gotta cancel this. I got That was my free box. Well, I couldn't get to the computer fast enough and it sent another box out which arrived and then you got that got to it before I did and you wrote all kinds of stuff on that side That's of the, the box. video that you guys just saw. And then uh, I had Oliver test it out and he tried it first, but one of the gel packs inside had exploded and, was, and he's like, oh gross, and it was all over him and it was getting everywhere and he thought it was applesauce. <laughs> This really happened. This really <laughs> happened. All over the right floor. Right here in this store. All over the floor, in the floor, it's all over the carpet and I'm, I'm trying to clean it up. Yeah. And then I drive home with that food box, right? And you and lose I, it. Well, I get home, and it's dark, and I'm, I'm, I carry it into the house. Uh huh. I can't find that box to save my life because I'm surrounded in a in a sea of cardboard boxes. Why are you surrounded in a sea? Because <laughs> we're cardboard? moving into a new oh. house, and this is like the epitome. This is the climax of the move, and there are boxes everywhere, inside, outside, in the garage, and my tired mind. I was moving stuff to and from and in storage and out of storage and in the garage last night and then I at some point I was like, oh I gotta get that box out of the car and somehow that box is now mixed in with all the other boxes. That's and I, gonna stink. I feel horrible about it. Yep, it's gonna stink. <laughs> I, I never found it. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, back to Stump the Chump. I believe it was my turn. Yeah, all our right. producer Kelly wants us to stay on topic by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's not <laughs> happening on this one. Alright. <laughs> So By what jelly. percentage does exercise reduce your risk of death? Insert question. <laughs> By what percentage does exercise reduce your risk of death? You asked me this last week. No, not last week. I have asked you this before. Oh, that was sleep deprivation. Yeah, yeah. Twice. Oh, aren't you going to give me A, B, or C? Sure, sure. <laughs> a... 
B, 27%, or C, 17%. It's getting hot in here. Um, 17%. Yes, correct. Just 30 minutes of low intensity exercise like walking or household chores can improve your sleep and reduce your risk of death by 17%. Ooh. Yep, yep. That's scary. That is, that is. How, what number are we on? That was it. That was it. That was all of Stump the Chump. It is time for question number three of the customer questions. Question number three of the customer questions. So, hmm. this one. What process do you guys go through to bring in new mattresses? How much real research goes into it? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> How, How much, much research let, goes into this? Let, let, okay, we're gonna we, instead of answering the question straight out, I'm just gonna ask her how many hours of research she did this week. How many hours of research did you do this week? I do. Um, here, I'm I'm here five days a week. Uh huh. I probably do it if the floor is not super busy, anywhere between five to eight hours of research a week. Yep. If I'm not if I'm not on the floor selling a product with a customer directly in front of me and I'm engaging with a customer, I'm behind my computer doing product research and advertising and marketing research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also am looking at all the other ways that other companies are doing their own advertising and marketing, whether you're yeah, big or small. Yep. Or even in, not even in this country. Yep. So yep. yeah, I think it's five to eight hours a day of just pure information processing. It's a lot of information processing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question of what process do we, do we go through to bring in a new mattress? There's a lot of process on it. Okay. But how much real research goes into it? Holy cow. Oh um, yeah. Cause you don't want to get something stuck with yeah. something on your sales yeah. floor that is we, not good. We're currently working on bringing in a whole new set of, of a whole new series of mattresses into our Carlsbad store. And to let you guys know, this project started June or July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's still not going on yet. It's just because of research. That's how, that, that, I mean, that's really what we're doing. It's constant research. It's seeing what the latest stuff is and how much we, of a niche we have of the customer needs. And that's, that's really, really what we're going for. Um, this is actually, that, this right here, what process you guys go through to bring a new mattress, I think this would be an amazing video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we could so, do that. Yeah, we'll, 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 answer, that we'll answer you by making a video on this, okay? Okay. All right, so. Whew, you know what, this year I'd really like to cut back, and I know a lot of us would on all of the, you know, because Thanksgiving starts, and then it just feels like we eat uh, Thanksgiving leftovers for days sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really like to, some people, not me in particular, I, I can totally roll with the, the sandwiches and stuff like that for a while, but some people really want to cut back on their turkey leftovers mm -hmm. and um, you know what's really hard about that is it's really hard to cut cold turkey <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah all right so this whole session of what we learned is going to be yours because your research this week oh, gosh. Is, is super important and I think people need to know this yeah so what what do you got take it away okay so what i researched this week is i focused on bed bugs this is supposed to be a bed bug but this is actually an um this is a, a mite a um, dust mite right. this is a dust mite mm -hmm. they don't act mm -hmm. bed bugs don't usually look like right. this but this is a right. giant dust mite um <laughs> this whole topic it starts to make me really really itch um so you've been scratching all week long. This yeah. this is horrible. I I had a really hard time putting my what I learned video together too. Before we get that rolling, um, you know some of the nicknames for bed bugs. Uh, I didn't know there was Bob. so many. Bob the bed bug. That's what we called our. This is Bob. <laughs> we have a couple mascots in the store. They do hang around. Sometimes they go home with people. Although now with the pandemic, there's a shortage of Bobs, so we can't let them go anymore. This is we've only got three left. We have to hold on tight to those bed bugs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no joke. So, anyways, uh, they are sometimes called red coats. They are. Mm -hmm. Mahogany flats. That sounds like a band. Night riders. Wall lice. 
coriander bugs, heavy dragoons, crimson ramblers, wallpaper flounders. <laughs> Are these real? <laughs> yes. Cinch bugs and the sinister sounding Nacthic Rabbler. Nacth wow. Rabbler. Those are all common uh, nicknames? nicknames for that have been used for the decades. How interesting. To okay. describe a bed bug, right? And documentation and evidence of this fossilized bed bug specimens, they go all the way back to Egypt. Now, I do have a video prepared for a little bit later. Okay. But for right now, I wanted to talk about how far back bed bugs go. And actually, there is fossilized evidence of bed bugs in Egyptian tombs. Whoa. It goes back that far. Now, it's believed that bed bugs as a species were brought here from the old world. Whoa. All right. But yes, there's there's bed bugs in Egyptian tombs. Um, as nocturnal pests, these bed bugs prefer to feed at nighttime, and they will seek their food source during the daytime if necessary. So they only come out during the daytime if they're ravishing hungry, right? Wow. They are most active between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. So if, so like mice, if there's a huge population of them, they'll come out during the day. Mm -hmm. So if you see bed bugs during the day, you're you are, pretty much, yeah. You're, you're totally infested. Yeah. yeah. Um, like okay. Santa Claus, they know when you're sleeping. Oh. Okay. Um, and they know that you're sleeping by the levels of CO2 that you give off when uh, you're asleep versus I'm when itchy. you're awake. I know, right? It just starts. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> so, um. So they know when to stay away from you because they know you're awake. Whoa. That's, they hide from you because they know that you're awake. Wow. They have that perception. Okay. Um, did you know... No. <laughs> I'll just tell you. That human DNA is identifiable inside of a bed bug? No Well, way. if you think about it, they're well, yeah, full of blood. Yeah. So forensic uh, scientists and detectives can utilize bed bugs for DNA Whoa. testing. Mm -hmm. um, DNA can be retrieved from a bed bug up to 90 days after feeding. They haven't digested the blood for it's 90 days? It's in there. Days. No, because wow. they eat so much. <laughs> wow, that's so gross. They, they drank that much blood out of you. They gorge themselves regularly, multiple times a day, and then they hold that DNA inside of their body for oh, up to 90 so days. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that they, pathogens that they carry with them, and there's very little known on what kind of pathogens they carry. You're itching a lot. It's, it's you got, horrible. You got I even worked as a professional entomologist. Like, I studied bugs under microscopes, but for some reason these ones really bother me. Um, bed bugs, a true bed bug is roughly the size of uh, two grains of salt. Mm. It says this paperwork, but we all know that they can be bigger. That's a different yeah. nymph stage. That's really small. They can small. be like very, very small, but it's more like two grains of rice. Yeah. I'd yeah. say like rice size. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Slightly larger than a flea. Yeah. But you way can, smaller than a tick. You can see it, and the adult yeah, phases yeah. or instars are the biggest. Yeah. Um, their population can double once every 16 days. What? So once, yeah, it, their population doubles once every 16 days. Wow. So a little over two weeks, they double. Uh, they can lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs at a time. Wow. Uh, they require a blood mill in advance of each of their five life stages. So they, the, the more they reproduce, the more they have to feed. Uh, so, and they can, the average bed bug lives six months. So we're talking serious infestation this is a serious problem 16 days and they survive six months so yeah this is oh my gosh yeah yeah it's Ooh. exponential okay um so i want to give a quick shout out to the researchers from new mexico state university mm -hmm. our neighbors in las cruces mm -hmm. because they have a program where they evaluate and they are continuing to evaluate repellents uh, that people can apply to their luggage to minimize exposure to bed bugs. Ooh. Okay, now, the reason I'm bringing up bed bugs right before we eat turkey is because we're all getting ready to travel. Maybe not everyone, but a vast majority mm -hmm. of the population this year will be, you know, traveling by yeah. plane, Yeah, it's the first car, time train. in two years that mm -hmm. they can. Yeah, so let's, let's all, like, mix in there and get yep. all together and take our luggage. Um, bed bugs were once thought to only be in, like, dives of hotels, but the reality is bed bugs can be anywhere. Yep. 
they can be anywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm talking rental cars, I'm talking retail spaces, office spaces, because if you think about it, people are jet setting, they are constantly moving. Mm -hmm. So you don't, it doesn't have to be in your bedroom. Um, so everyone needs to be aware of that um, when you're going. That's um, like the 10th time you've itched yourself. I, it's just, it's, it's all over. And so <laughs> what can you do? This is where we're gonna insert my awesome video <laughs> that I prepared for you. Cause these are some tips that you can take. While well, she itches in the background. Well, yes. So uh, a couple of things that you can do, uh, cause we're all getting ready to hit the ground running. We're all gonna be traveling this year. Um, when you get to your room, a lot of the times when we finally reach to our place, we wanna just lay down, get in bed, get comfortable. But really uh, we need to first survey the room for bugs we need to check our pillows check the headboards check the seams you know look around the room it may look clean but go ahead and pull those sheets back and before you get too settled in make sure that you don't have any signs of bed bugs um, or colored rust spots on your bed sheets mattress tags and seams and bed skirts okay so you're looking for little tiny rust colored blood spots okay um, definitely look under there really really well with your cell phone light and just do a thorough check of your room even if this is a high-end top-notch place that you're staying it will it will save you so much because you want to turn that in right away um, you want to lift and look for bed bug hiding spots underneath the mattresses box springs and bed frame and near any of the furniture mm -hmm. you want to elevate your lug I can do it affecting my breathing <laughs> my throat's itchy too <coughs> you want to elevate your luggage instead of putting it on the floor okay you want to use the luggage rack that's why your luggage rack is there and hang your clothes and pull it all away from the bed and stuff you don't want to leave it on the floor you might even you know bring an encasement protector a traveling bed bug protector for your pillow if you have to have your pillow you want to protect your pillow okay now do you know where the safest place to store your where is the safest place to store your luggage? I would hope it's a bathtub. It is a bathtub. That is the safest place in any uh, hotel is to put all of your luggage in the bathtub. Because that's where I'm sleeping from now on. Yeah, that's the only place they don't get is the bathtub. <laughs> um, bed bugs are able to scale. They are not able to scale the slick ceramic. So examine your luggage carefully while repacking for your return trip when you arrive home. I want you to store your luggage. Got the creeps. Yeah, it, store your luggage outside of your bedroom to minimize access to a host, and put your clothes in the dryer on medium to high heat for 15 minutes to kill any bed bugs in their legs, eggs. So when you come home, you want to kind of leave your stuff out for a while. Mm -hmm. um, leave it out there. Check your luggage, and then just put all of your clothes and everything into uh, dryer. the dryer and hot water and hot stuff. So, pair uh, the the we have this up in our store. This was kind of a little little spot. Um, they are. We'll, we'll have information on hand at any time you need it. There's a plethora of information online. If I just continue going, it's just going to gross everybody out, and I can't. I have more, but I can't share it because I'm so itchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so, so she started this research because last week oh. we stumbled upon a top 100 tips and tricks or tips and facts about bed bugs. And then so we were like, hey, let's do videos on it. And then she's doing she's doing the research on it this past week. And we decided that maybe a video was a little too much to do right now until we get kind of unitchy. <laughs> it was bad because um there's so much in the topic I want to go over. You know, we can share a little bit of it, but we'll do a full segment on it. We just have to get desensitized to the fact. I, that I started there. going through the photos, and I could put like one little photo. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Now, the best way to protect yourself and your home, okay, from bed bugs, is come and see us. Check out our website because we have mattress protectors specific to this. All right. A lot of times, customers will buy two different types of the really savvy shoppers and the people that are really savvy about all of this. Um, you're going to buy a total encasement for your new mm -hmm. mattress. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that one is one that goes all the way around. It zips up and it has bed bug proof everything. It's got a barrier for them. It yeah. has a barrier, right? Mm -hmm. So they cannot penetrate it. 
The other type of mattress protector is just going to go over the top and go around. It fits like a fitted sheet. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. that will keep out dust mites. It'll keep out these little guys. Mm -hmm. It's not going to protect your investment from bed bugs. Okay, bed bugs are going to go underneath. They're going to get anywhere and everywhere they can. Yep. Um, so you really, to be completely protected in your mattress, you you really do need to purchase both of those. It's they're expensive. But they are well worth the investment. But I the mean, mattress is expensive, so you want to protect it. You want to do it, and they will last the lifetime of your mattress. Mm -hmm. We do also have encasement um, pillowcases and special pillowcases for traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. live very close to an Air Force base here. The vast majority of our customers are jet sitting all the time, um, so we have Carl's those. Carlsbad's nomadic as well. So nomadic. Yeah. We have the oil field. Um, so when you have, when you go anywhere. Come by and see us, and we can make sure that we have the right product, um, and that it's actually certified. It's not just a, a toss off, yeah, off yeah. the internet. So yeah, so yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, that was great info, the scary <laughs> info, but yeah, great info. With that, we're going to call it a night. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next episode. Say hello, Oliver. We have our Oliver's special. Hi. <laughs> our special guest who was also handling our special effects today. Thank he God. did the snow. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. High five. I'm still too cheap for, to spring for special effects, so this is what you get. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya.